After making landfall in Florida in the summer of 2005, Hurricane Katrina regained strength in the unusually warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Its name would forever be emblazoned in the American lexicon, but Katrina isn't known for its wind speed. Its most lethal aspect was its storm surge, infamously revealing engineering flaws in the levee system in the city of New Orleans, leaving over 80% of the majority black city flooded for weeks. Of the costliest 20 hurricanes ever to form in the Atlantic, 17 have occurred in the last 20 years. Since 1980, tropical storms have accounted for nearly $950 billion in damages. And due to climate change, the intensity of destructive cyclones continues to increase. Our project is when the levees broke, adding socioeconomic dimensionality to flood risk predictive modeling. The goal of our team, consisting of myself, Kristen, Satya, and Marie Claire, was to create a tool that can help support management and design of coastal infrastructure to minimize damage caused by tropical storms in Louisiana. By combining socioeconomic and demographic data with traditional geographic flood risk factors, we were able to predict the level of impact each area received during Katrina, as well as identify areas with disproportionately poor infrastructure. Marie Claire will explain. Our first step in developing our model was determining where we were getting our socioeconomic data, as this was our main contribution to the growing field of geographical risk flood modeling prediction. So we decided to use census income, poverty, and demographic data. For geographical flood risk data independent of socioeconomic factors, we use the national flood hazard layer. And for the target variable we wanted to predict, we use NFIP data consisting of the number of people who reported flood-related damages in a three-week window during Hurricane Katrina. We merged and cleaned the data set, preserving data for 471 out of the 474 zip codes in Louisiana. We then went through rigorous feature selection, where we decided which aspects of our large data set were the most useful for our analysis. Next, we did feature engineering to prepare for modeling, where instead of needing to predict the raw number of people reporting damages per zip code, we bin that quantity into five categories and labeled each zip code as low risk, low moderate risk, all the way up to high risk. Lastly, we built and tested our models, trying both simple and complex ones until landing on two highly accurate yet different models. Here are the performances of a variety of models. We see that the simpler linear models outperform slightly more complex ones, but all of them have at most 77% accuracy. Though this is pretty good already, we wanted to push for even more accurate modeling. Our first model was based on extreme gradient boosting with an accuracy of 87%. The map on the left shows the accuracy of the model with green zones correctly guessed, blue zones slightly less correct, and gray zones the least correct. The most important features identified by XGBoost included density, total population, bachelor's rate, area of zip code, geographical risk, and number of housing units. The last model we chose was an artificial neural network based model, and the key differences between the two can be seen in the map. There's far less gray and more blue, indicating that although the ANN wasn't as accurate as the XGBoost model, it was less wrong when it made mistakes. Evidence for this is how the Lower Ninth Ward, an area widely known for being completely devastated by Katrina, was correctly predicted in this model, but wrongly predicted in the XGBoost model. In stark contrast to the XGBoost model, the features most important to the ANN included the number of housing units, total population, density, percent black, bachelor's rate, and geographical risk. A higher attention to socioeconomic details, such as the percentage of each zip code that identifies as black, implies that focusing on these factors allows for recognizing systemic biases against certain demographics that could cause flood protection infrastructure underfunding. The dashboard we created features two of our most successful models, ANN and XGBoost. The map displays the accuracy scores in each zip code of Louisiana, with green being perfect accuracy to red being the least accurate. You're able to interact with the map to see the specific risk score associated with each zip code, filter for specific accuracy scores, and see the differences between the two models. And now I'll hand it back to Will for our conclusion. We hope that our findings can possibly have a significant impact on the future infrastructure and policy considerations of the state of Louisiana. Policies that center the health and safety of frontline communities and communities of color, leading to more effective and equitable climate mitigation efforts. Suggesting for the future, we would have liked to have done analysis for all the Gulf Coast states with data from a larger set of tropical storms of varying intensities. 
We also believe there's great benefit to be found for more in-depth feature analysis, as well as more modeling. We believe doing more research to discover insights regarding risk at the intersections of race, gender, income, and education status would be hugely beneficial to state and local governments throughout the Southeast and beyond to generate better risk assessments, build better infrastructure, and optimize disaster response as we work to tackle the climate crisis. Thank you.